Now that we've discussed the basic properties of electromagnetism, we're ready to see how to describe a, a very common phenomenon which is uh, known as periodic motion, which is a way of describing anything that is repeating its motion periodically with some periodicity. So we'll see how to describe that here. As an overview, one more time, what we've done is described the mechanics. We talked about how to apply it to fluids and gases, and then just recently, electromagnetism. And now with this periodic motion, we'll be able to introduce waves as well as sound and light, which are both examples of these waves, before we move into the more intricate and uh, very zoomed in phenomena of atoms and thermodynamics. So first, let's start with just waves and how to describe them. We'll start with just the wave properties and how we discuss those, and then uh, bring up some uh, examples of periodic motion, which will hark back to uh, many of the Newton's laws examples that we discussed uh, previously. But first, let's talk about how we can describe waves and what are the basic wave properties that we should be familiar with. We can ask ourselves a question in defining a wave, uh, which is how could I, if I wanted to transfer energy, maybe from me to you, how could I give you some sort of energy if you wanted to be able to use it? One way would be I could just take some object and throw it to you, and that object would have energy, and then that object would go from me to you, and I would have transferred energy to you. A wave is a way of transferring energy without having to actually move objects themselves. What we do uh, is say that the energy transfers through some medium. So for example, in an ocean wave, the energy from deep out in the ocean is moving in towards the shore without the water from deep out into the ocean having to actually move itself to the shore. And so this is the common uh, definition or idea of waves that we'll be using and thinking about as we go. It's a, it's a transfer of energy through some medium without having to transfer any actual objects through that medium. Let's uh, take a particular example of something that uh, is a wave phenomenon that you might uh, be familiar with, which is a guitar string. So just imagine for yourself a guitar string uh, like this. And we're just zooming into one part of it, and maybe after you've plucked the string, it is vibrating up and down, and you can see uh, some sort of profile to the motion. We describe two different kinds of wave. A guitar string, as we've just introduced here, is what we would call a transverse wave. And we call it transverse because the direction of the oscillations are up and down, whereas the wave itself, if you were watching it on the guitar string, would be moving from left to right. If you picked one crest of the wave, one high point, and followed it across, you would see it moving left to right, whereas any point on the wave is moving up and down. And ocean waves would be a good example of this as well. You see the wave itself is moving from right to left or from out towards into the shore, Whereas any point on that wave, if you had maybe a buoy or a boat out in the water, you would see it just moving up and down. And so the direction of the motion of any point on the wave is perpendicular to the motion of the wave itself. So we call these transverse waves. And again, the oscillations uh, will be perpendicular to the direction of motion, which is something to uh, keep in mind as we look through waves to always identify this particular kind of behavior. And this is just the opposite of what we would call a longitudinal wave. A longitudinal wave is a wave where the directions of the oscillations are in the same direction as the motion of the wave. For example, if I had a spring or a slinky uh, as a toy we can see here, I could push my hand along it and that would send a pulse or a wave through the slinky. And you can see that the direction of what we would call the displacement, the motion of the actual material, is moving left to right, which is the same direction that the waves are moving. In other words, any point on the slinky is just moving left to right like this, and that's also the direction left to right in the same direction that the waves themselves are moving as they go through the spring. These oscillations um, are happening on a small scale. So when I'm talking about the overall motion of a wave through an object like this slinky. I'm comparing that to the motion of a particular point in the slinky or the spring. And those are the two things you should always compare when you're thinking about whether a wave is longitudinal or transverse. So again, think about one point on the spring, it will move left to right, and the entire wave as it's going through the spring is also moving left to right, and this defines a longitudinal wave.